Hi, hello there, I'm Drake and welcome to another day on Dartmoor and it's another lovely sunny day and we're into June and we've had one of the driest Mays on record and today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, watering and but before we get into that um, I'm just going to show you a little uh, a, a tip here. I've been planting, I've got a wheelbarrow full of um, wild flower plugs which I which you may have seen on a previous video and these were done about three weeks ago and they're now ready to be planted out and what I'm doing is I'm just going to um, show you an implement here and this is actually used for planting bulbs and what I've done is well what you do with this is you stick it into the ground twist it and what it does is it cuts a little um, piece of turf out which is it's a bit like taking a core sample but it as you can see it's hollow inside and yeah it cuts this turf out once that's taken out of the ground you've got a hole in the ground and if you can see they're kind of almost exactly fit these plugs and these plugs are in a, uh, a cardboard tube so it'll all just rot down nicely and I don't disturb the roots of the plant so I'm just going to show you what I'm up to here. So here's the hole over here. I'll have to scan you down a bit more. There we go. So that just gets pushed into there and it's done. And then all I do is put a little bit of uh, mulch around it, which in this case is just a bit of dried grass, old grass. And that, apart from anything else, just helps me identify where I've planted my plugs so I can pay a little bit more attention to their care and well being as they establish. And as we go across there, you can see here, I've got a tree. Now, this tree is a relatively young tree. I only planted it last year. And um, what I've done at the base of this tree, and this is a trick that I picked up when I was living in Spain, and we were doing um, a project to green desertified parts of the region. And what you do is you cut out um, something like a basin. And um, the tree is, in the ground there's a basin around it which is literally cupping it and this helps collect all the water and you might wonder why you want to do that well if you're in a dry region you do because you want to maintain as much moisture as possible now obviously in the UK if you retain too much water around a plant you can cause rot so it's a bit of a fine balance to actually decide what will work and what won't work but certainly this time of year, I'm very glad that I've got those bowls there. Now these, I've just left as, as clear earth. And that's part of my compromise living in the climate that we live in in the UK. Um, but what I might do, and what I often do with plants where I'm engaging with them on more of a day-to-day -day basis or week-by-week -week basis, such as in a vegetable garden, I might consider mulching more liberally and this will get me through the growing season, get me through the summer months. And what I use for mulching is either, yes, things like grass, straw, um, I will use that. Any other organic matter I might use is this stuff, which is just basically um, wood chips. So this we collected when we were trimming our hedgerow and it's just all mashed up really. But that's good stuff and it'll all help you know, keep the moisture in the ground. And you can also use things like cardboard, brown cardboard. Um, that's perfect. Just tear it up and put it around the base of your plants. Um, you might want to weight things down, especially things like straw and cardboard. Um, so in which case it's quite good to then put perhaps something like gravel on the surface if, if that works in your garden environment. And um, yeah, and those are, so those are the, the kind of basics around uh, mulching. And the other thing is, is that when you're planting out and if you're particularly doing things like container planting, watch you don't over fertilize your plants. Because if you put too much uh, fertilizer in there, then the plants may bolt and they'll be more greedy for water. And so you're just, you're, you're kind of like perpetuating a situation where you're gonna need to actually manage them more than what you would normally need to do. So be careful about over fertilizing your plants. Also, there's an efficiency level. Um, if you give too much food to plants, not only will they bolt, but it's just inefficient in terms of how they balance their water and nutrient levels. So 
just take take the time to notice how your plant is behaving and adapt to suit. Um, and the other thing around what you should do with uh, drought planting or you know planting in dry conditions is to consider things like what kind of plant am I going to put in there? And if you put in a plant with silver leaves, that's really great because they're more reflective of sunlight so they can cope. And those plants are actually quite typical of windy areas and coastal areas. So you might want to look and see what's growing really well in a coastal area and bring it to your own garden. Um, and that leads into, you know, grow natives because they're used to the climate that they're growing in. And I know we're heading into, um, you know, the, the, the climate, well, we're not heading into it, we're in the climate crisis already. So we need to consider in the garden what we can do to mitigate that. So it's not just about planting natives, it's about planting what's suitable, what can adapt, and what can cope with all these shifts that are happening. And, you know, you might want to consider some Mediterranean plants, for example. But do bear in mind that, that we're not in the Mediterranean <laughs> and some of those plants will suffer from, you know, the damp in particular, cold, wet, damp. They don't like that. Um, so think about your garden environment, your container environment. You might want to put more gravel in there. Um, you might want to move them around if you're in containers to different parts of the garden over the whole year. Um, so just, you know, again, it's about listening. It's about noticing what's going on in your garden and just really getting close and up there and personal with your plants. The other thing with watering. Now, I know it's like, it's a lovely day. Oh, I'm going to pop out and do some watering. Yes, <laughs> your plant may very well need watering, but if you do it on a day like this, now it's still early here, but if, you, if you're doing this at, say, noon, when the sun is at its zenith, and it's going to be its most powerful and you're sprinkling water around your plants, the water will go on the leaves and you can actually burn the leaves of the trees or the plants just by having water uh, scattered onto the leaves. So please do avoid that. The other thing is, is that if you do do that in the middle of the day, then most of the water that you put down is going to evaporate really, really quickly. So um, try and do your watering I would say early in the morning, not in the evening. The reason I say not in the evening is simply because um, if you're like me and you have uh, an issue with slugs and snails, then they come out at night when it's nice and moist and munch, munch, munch on all your plants. So if you do it early in the morning, you're less likely to have that issue. Yes, you'll have a bit of evaporation as the day goes on, but it's just not as much. Um, and the other thing about doing it super early in the morning is it gets you out of the house. <laughs> gets you out of the house, gets you into the garden, gets you embracing the start of the day, get up with the dawn chorus. I mean, it's just so joyous. I often, well, not often, but sometimes I'll be up at four or five o'clock in the morning at this time of year. And it's great. I can't, I'm running down to the garden because I need to do some watering, but it's also just to be outside. So, you know, just grab those opportunities. And um, yeah, I think that's all I really want to say um, about, um, about planting in dry conditions right now. There is a lot more I could say, um, but that's a little bit of an um, introduction, if you like. And all that remains for me to say is thank you for your listening. And I hope you have a really, really great day. And yeah, I will see you again soon. Bye bye.